Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer here and welcome to a video about how to shoot first person games cinematically without no mods, you know, you're not modding the game, you're not breaking the game. You're actually going to be using effects in your video editor to kind of make it look better. Now I know some of you guys might be looking at this because you've seen some montages from someone and whatnot. I'm here to help you out with some of those things, you know, those issues you might have with shooting cinematic first person games. So really, the first thing you want to do is if you want to shoot cinematically, make sure that if you can, anything on your HUD, whether it's name tags popping up, your ammo counter, you know, your whole entire screen but your gun, as many things in, in your screen that is not the game, you know, as many as possible, turn that stuff off. You don't want that stuff on. It can make the screen look more cluttered than it really is and just kind of gets in the way. But if you can't turn those off, that's okay. That just makes the game look a little bit better. Now, the next thing you want to do is when you're playing your game, you know, you're playing your game, right? It doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, do your thing, right? Just do your thing. Now, this all kind of comes into the video editor. This is the next part of making your game look cinematic. Now, in first person games, you have your ammo counter on your bottom right. You probably have a radar somewhere. Maybe your HUD, a shield, you know, health bar, you know, whatever kind of things that would clutter up your HUD, you can get rid of most of those things with a simple tool um, called the Pan Crop Tool in Sony Vegas. This is done in Sony Vegas, Adobe Premiere people. This is all basic video editing, so you really don't need to worry about it too much, but you want to put black bars on the top and bottom of your screen, kind of like how a movie is shot. That way, it focuses your attention more on the gun, and it gets rid of that cluttered stuff. Because when you're playing a game that where all of the, all of the icons are put and stuff like that, no one's going to look there anyway, because there's too much stuff in the way. So you might as well just cut it out entirely and, you know, have them focus on your gun. Now, you might have, let's just say, like the top of a radar popping up, or a shield, or maybe a little character icon in the bottom left or some ammo counter, you know, whatever you have. You can use this stuff to your advantage or you can do a circular blur. That's what I like to call it. It's like an oval type blur where you blur just simply around the edges of your screen. But if you want to use this stuff to your advantage, you can. And what you can do is after you kind of have those black bars set, you can make the screen kind of move around, bump around, you know, use those lights to your advantage. I have a montage that I made a while ago where I use the stuff in the bottom of my screen to my advantage. Now, how, how would I use And the top screen, by the way. How would I use this? Well, I needed some kind of transitional effect, and they were all bright images. And you guys, I probably played the clip, or I can play it now. And I needed bright kind of brightness changes to note a transition. And I used, because the top of my screen had a bright blue and a bright orange icon and some other bright icons, I just kind of blurred it and unblurred the screen to kind of do a transition. There was also some white stuff on the bottom, you know, just white icons. I used that as well. Now, not only that, but if you watch the clip, an explosion happens where I make the screen zoom out. Now, for this, I actually use a different technique in this montage. Instead of the black bars, I just zoom everything in uh, a little bit. Right? I zoom the whole screen in, which is a viable technique too. If you don't want to do the black bars, just zoom the whole screen in. right? But what I did was I made the screen bump out, and if you notice, all of the kind of little white icons on the bottom do this diagonal effect outward. All right? And I use that to my advantage, because it creates a cool visual effect that is basically unique to that game because it's really hard to replicate some visual effects that games create. Now in that montage, I didn't use the black bar technique that I showed. I used a different technique I like to call the zoom, where let's just say you have a game where the icons are really, really big, or they're small, but they're kind of floating up from the bottom. So, you know, maybe you make those black bars, but they don't really do anything. They kind of cover up half the icons, but they're still there. What you can do is zoom your whole screen in, and you know, if you wanted to put more black bars in, totally up to you, but you can zoom your whole screen in. Now, when I do the pan crop tool, I'll show you guys this now, it has a little automatic 
kind of size that it likes to do. I like to use this size because for most games it cuts out all the stuff you don't want. You can use a different size if you want, you know, zoom in, doing as much as you want. But this can really focus in on the viewer. If you are using, you know, if you're doing more long range battles where maybe the viewer can't see the person, this is a really good zoom technique that you can use to zoom in so the person that you're shooting at or fighting or whatever can be seen. Now I didn't use, in the clip that I showed, I didn't use the technique of canceling out names and stuff, which I regret, but you know, mistakes are mistakes. You learn from them, right? That's one of the techniques I learned is that in Rainbow Six Siege, which is the game you saw, you can turn off name tags and stuff like that. So if I'm shooting for cinematics, I'm totally gonna turn that stuff off. All right, there can be a couple little things if you want to shoot for slow motion, right? Slow motion, you kind of need 60 FPS to make it look good. The problem is, if you don't have 60 FPS, what are you gonna do? Well, there's a solution. That is, you have to turn your sensitivity down. Unfortunately, if you're like me, you play on higher sensitivity, it's gonna be hard. But if you wanna shoot something where you're doing cinematic gunplay, you're gonna have to turn your sensitivity down because then if, if you take a 60 FPS clip and slow it down, doesn't look as jittery as a 30 FPS clip does. A 30 FPS clip kind of hops, you know, goes boom, boom, boom. While a 60 FPS clip is very smooth when it slows down. That can be really challenging to use. Another technique you can use is a resample technique um, where instead of slowing something down, you kind of blur it when it slows down. That might fix it a little bit. But if you can, shoot 60 FPS if you want to do slow motion stuff. And you know what? Everything else in terms of like color, how does the color look on something? How do you transition that? You can you can figure that out by yourself. That's where I kind of don't want to tell you guys what I do because it might kind of ruin your style, you know. Maybe I have a specific color, uh, color grading that I like and you have something different. You know, I like different transitions than you. You guys can all figure that out in your video editing software. I will say this kind of panning and stuff doesn't work with Windows Movie Maker. I don't know about iMovie because I don't use a Mac, but Windows Movie Maker, you can't do stuff like this. You're going to have to use some of the more expensive high-end, you know, Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere Pro. One of those two are really going to help you out in making your gameplay, your first-person gameplay, look absolutely amazing for montages, you know, all that good stuff. But guys, thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed, you can tell me in the comments below. Subscribe for more... Uh, little tips on filming your video games for not just gameplay because I feel like you know That's a that's a tough question that I can answer for you guys because I have experience with that So I'm Sif the casual gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games And I will see you in the next episode stream or vlog of whatever I decide to make